thank you for joining us as we come back for our next segment of Daily Bible Bites here at Mount Olive Multicultural Community Church. Today we are in Chattanooga, Tennessee at the KOA. We're on the road. So you'll be joining us now from different places as, as we have um, restarted our full-time RV and the pandemic is not over necessarily but it is really um, dwindling down I guess I'll say with the um, with people getting the vaccines and and that we're finally kind of getting a hold of this thing I believe and so we're back I'm sorry for the long break that we took but realistically I'm gonna have to admit now that there probably will be other breaks as as we go along um, chronologically through the Bible because life happens we've had a lot of things take place um, but we're back at it and hope that you will continue to join us so today we're going to tackle first samuel 28 through 31. about that time the philistines mustered their armies for another war with israel come and help us fight king ashish said to david good david agreed the philistines set up their camp at shunem and saul and the armies of israel were at gilboa when Saul saw the vast army of the Philistines, he was frantic and asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him. Saul then instructed his aides to find a medium, and they found one at Endor. Saul disguised himself. He went to the woman's home at night. I've got to talk to a dead man, he pleaded. Are you trying to get me killed, the woman demanded. Saul has had all of the mediums executed. But Saul took a solemn oath that he wouldn't betray her. Finally, the woman said, well, whom do you want me to bring up? Bring me Samuel, Saul replied. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, you've deceived me, you are Saul. Don't be frightened, the king told her. What does he look like? He's an old man. Saul realized that it was Samuel. Why have you disturbed me? Samuel asked Saul. He replied, the Philistines are at war with us and God has left me, so I have called for you to ask you what to do. But Samuel replied, all this has come upon you because you did not obey the Lord's instructions. What's more, the entire Israeli army will be destroyed tomorrow and you and your sons will be here with me. Saul now fell full length upon the ground, paralyzed with fright. 29. As the Philistine captains were leading out their troops, David and his men marched at the rear with King Achish. But the Philistine commanders demanded, what are these Israelis doing here? And King Achish told him, this is David, he's been with me for years. But the Philistine leaders were angry. Send them back, they demanded. They'll turn against us. This is the same man that the women of Israel sang about. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So Achish summoned David and his men. He told them, I think you should go with us, but my commanders say no. What have I done? David demanded. Why can't I fight? But Akish insisted, you're as perfect as an angel of God, but my commanders are afraid to have you with them in battle. So David headed back. 30. When David and his men arrived home, they found that the Amalekites had raided the city and burned it to the ground, carrying off all the women and children. As David and his men looked, they wept. David was seriously worried, for in their bitter grief for their children, his men began talking of killing him. David asked the Lord, shall I chase them? Will I catch them? And the Lord told him, yes. So David and his 600 men set out. When they reached Besor Brook, 200 men were too exhausted to cross, but the other 400 kept going. Along the way, they found an Egyptian youth in a field and brought him to David. Where are, who are you and where do you come from? David asked him. I'm an Egyptian, the servant of an Amalekite, he replied. My master left me behind. Can you tell me where they went, David asked. The young man replied, if you will not kill me or give me back to my master, then I will guide you to them. So he led them to the Amalekite encampment. They were eating, drinking, and dancing with joy because of the vast amount of loot they had taken. David and his men rushed in and slaughtered them all that night and the entire next day. David got back everything they had taken. The men recovered their families and David rescued his two wives. When they reached Bezor Brook, the 200 men had been too exhausted to go on, but David greeted them joyfully. But some of the ruffians among David's men declared they didn't go with us, so they can't have any of the loot. But David said, no, my brothers, we share and share alike. When he arrived at Ziklag, he sent part of the loot to the elders of Judah. 
31. Meanwhile, the Philistines had begun the battle against Israel and the Israelis slaughtered wholesale on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines closed in on Saul and, and killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. Then the archers overtook Saul and wounded him badly. He groaned to his armor bearer, kill me with your sword before these Philistines torture me. But his armor bearer was afraid to. So Saul took his own sword and fell upon the point. When his armor bearer saw that he was dead, he also fell upon his sword. When the Philistines went out to strip the dead, they found the bodies of Saul and his three sons. They cut off Saul's head and sent the wonderful news of Saul's death to their idols and to the people throughout their land. His armor was placed in the temple of Asheroth, and his body was fastened to the wall of Bethshan. But when the people of Jabesh Gilead heard, warriors traveled all night and took down the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh, where they cremated them. So that is the end of 1 Samuel. We have come to the end of 1 Samuel. We'll be back in Psalms, our next um, Daily Bible Bites, our next segment. But we end this with a bang. People who say the Bible is boring have not read. This reads like any kind of epic, right? Um, but it, it happened. Historians have verified that this all has taken place. But what this tells me in these last chapters is that your friends are not always your friends and your foes are not always your foes. It took someone who was presumably on the other side to lead David to those people that he needed to take out and take down. And so we have to listen to the aid of the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit, um, to our aid that comes from the Lord, which is the Holy Spirit. And he will lead us and tell us what we need to do even when it doesn't sound like something that our right mind would tell us to do or our common sense would tell us to do. David had to trust the Lord. He had to be obedient and he had to follow him right to the last cross of the T and dot of the I so that he would be, um, he would be victorious in everything that he did. And you can be victorious in every single thing that you do if you listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to that comforter which the Lord left for us when he said that he was going up to prepare a place for us. Listen to him at all times and you will never fail. Thank you so much for joining us for this segment of Daily Bible Bites. Join us back again when we'll be in another spot. We're heading out of Ch uh, Chattanooga in just a few moments. We'll be in another place and um, show you around where we are and jump back in the book of Psalms. God bless you. And as always, we hope to see you on the other side at www.dltmoreministries.com where you can join us for our weekly uh, messages or our weekly worship services, weekly Bible study, weekly wellness min uh, ministry, and also prayer Friday evenings at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you and we love you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.